for uh, geopolymer science. I just recall my campaign about why alkali activated materials are not geopolymers, because alkali activated materials are not polymers, they are just hydrate and precipitates. They cannot be called geopolymers. These are two different, very different systems. And it is a big scientific mistake to use both as synonym. Alkali activation is the wrong terminology for geopolymer. Last year, I said, well, I thought, I think this would be my part three and the last one. But I have to put a part four. That is totally different. So my last word on, I hope, on alkali-activated uh, materials versus geopolymer cement. I repeat things that are well known, I hope now. This is the chemistry of Portland cement hydration. You are dealing with small molecules. This is a monomer. This is a monosilicate of calcium. This is a simple small molecule that is hydrated and generates the formation of a dimer to SI calcium, calcium desilicate hydrate. This is the CSH of the cementitis. Period. This is geopolymer chemistry. It has nothing to do. You have the polymerization, the polycondensation of molecules that uh, build a network. And this is a polymer. But cement scientists that are accustomed to Portland cement terminology with their calcium silicate hydrate CaO, CO2, H2O, that is CSH, when tackling so-called alkali activation or geopolymers in their mind, substitute the calcium with the sodium and the potassium, and are starting to make a big chemical mistake. Calcium is known to be insoluble in water. So you, you may have a calcium silicate hydrate. You don't care about the water. The calcium still remains on place. And you may use this terminology. But if you replace the calcium with the sodium and the potassium, as they are doing for geopolymer, sodium aluminum silicon oxide, sodium aluminum silicate hydrate, the sodium is very soluble in water. That means if it is an hydrate, all the sodium will be leached out, will move. So they call it NASH, which is totally wrong. And it is a very crucial, fundamental mistake from a scientific point of view. And uh, that induces and generates all wrong uh, behavior and very wrong uh, uh, thinking about uh, uh, what is uh, good and what is uh, geopolymer. Same for potassium. Potassium in anhydrate will practically immediately migrate, be leached out. So all this terminology that you'll find in papers, essentially those written and published by a well-known uh, journal called Cement and Concrete Research, where you have all geopolymer, Nash, Cash, are totally wrong and inducing wrong information to the community who want to develop something. So according to alkali activating materials, cement scientists, Geopolymer is a type of alkali aluminum hydrate, Nash, cash, nothing else. It is wrong. Geopolymer results from polycondensations, 
of well-defined monomers, like this one, SI, SIL321. This is the polysilate diciloxo cycle that polycondense and build the first ribbon oligomer. It is a small molecule that will, this is, can be called cash. You have the potassium, you have the oxidrills, and you have some water, and you have the KOH. So it is the calcium aluminosilicate hydrate. But it is the first step of geopolymerization. It is not the end result, because it continues to build the three-dimensional network. If you stop here, of course you have cash. You have something that uh, has uh, one uh, MPA uh, strength, I put it in water, it will dissolve, be destroyed. But this is not what we are doing. We continue polymerization and we create a three-dimensional network. And when we look at nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, this is what we have for the aluminum. The aluminum is surrounded by the silicon and has its potassium strongly attached to it. It will not move. This is what nature has done with all the feldspars, with all the granite, with all the basalt, with all the stones. They are made according to the same structures and they are still there, millions of years. It is not cash, it is not Nash. So if you want to have cash and Nash product, you look at one patent that has been granted in the US in 2016, alkali metal ion source with moderate rate of ion release. So you extract the cation, the potassium, and the sodium, and method of forming. There is a growing need for alternative sources of alkali metals, such as, but not limited to, potassium, traditional potassium fertilizing agent making local manufacturing of potassium fertilizer increasingly attractive. Therefore, a need exists to produce a source of potassium ion that releases the nutrient, that is the potassium cation, at a moderate rate, lower than the infinite dissolution rate of a traditional salt, but faster than the rate generally exhibited by naturally occurring minerals. What we have? We have a cash gel here. They are producing, manufacturing a cash gel. But this is their target to get and their claim the method wherein the weight percent of cash gel of the alkali metal ion source is between about 10% and about 100%. For what purpose? To make a fertilizer, to have the potassium cation coming out in earth with water. This is logical to have this type of terminology. And who is filing for such a patent? Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT. So MIT is not claiming that cash is geopolymer. MIT is working on cash as a fertilizer. Do you understand? This is the reality. This is NASH, sodium aluminosilicate hydrate active, alkali activated materials will all blooming, the, all the sodium coming out. This is a wrong Mix, this is geopolymer ceramic. This is geopolymer concrete. This is slag flyage based geopolymer concrete. 